Hi, welcome to the eighth episode of the New England Gal Knits podcast. I am Janet and I live in Massachusetts with my husband, our two boys, our cat, and our dog. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram at the New England Gal. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Thank you so much for your support. And if you're a new viewer, welcome to the podcast. I hope you enjoy it. So I hope everyone had a wonderful holiday season and a very happy new year. So today is January 2nd and it is quite frigid here in the Northeast. We're in an Arctic front and it was a negative three degrees Fahrenheit when I woke up this morning, which I probably shouldn't complain. My twin brother lives up in upstate New York, right by the Quebec border and it was negative 23 degrees out and he owns a farm with his husband and they have to go out there and do barn chores and take care of the goats and the alpacas and the chicken, chickens and all of that, those things. And luckily for me, all I have to do is run the dog in and out of the house to go to the bathroom. So I probably shouldn't complain, but negative three is quite chilly even for here in Massachusetts. And our poor dog, who is a miniature husky, you would think would be built for this type of weather, and his his poor little paws in the hardened ice snow, um, the, his paws can't handle it. So we ended up having to buy him booties. Those should be coming within the next few days. So hopefully that'll give him some relief and make it a little easier to go outside in this weather. So anyways, I am wearing something I've knit. This I knit two years ago. So this is the Pure Joy Shawl by Hohi Locatelli. And I can't remember, I believe the navy blue is the um, Cascade Heritage Sock Yarn. And then the color is by Pirate Vlog. I don't think I said that right. I'll put the name down below. Um, she's out of Germany. It's not a superwash merino uh, wool. It's just a superwash wool, so it's a little bit toothier, but it's super warm and I absolutely love it. So this says, need something super warm today. It's tough. Um, the sun is out and it's beautiful and shining bright. The only problem is at my office, it gets so warm in there, you just want to wear t-shirts because of the greenhouse effect, yet it's so cold outside, you need to wear something a little bit warmer. So I tend to wear on sunnier days, thinner sweaters with a, a shawl wrapped around my neck to keep me warm in case I need it. So I do have quite a bit of finished objects to share with you six actually, um, however I only have two on hand because the rest of them were gift knits and have been given to their recipients. However, I do have pictures so I'll insert them as I talk about them. So the first two are the Fire Pit Mitts by Taylor Earl, who is also the podcaster behind uh, Wool Needle Hand Podcast, which is one of my favorites. And these were so simple and quick to knit. I knit a pair for the boy's bus driver as well as my younger son Ryan's teacher. They were knit out of, and I didn't have the tag, I was able to find it. Um, so these were knit out of SMC Northern Wool Tweed in the colors 4030. And these are actually 85% um, wool, 10% acrylic, and 5% viscose. They knit up quickly. Uh, they, they're just the perfect fingerless mitts. Super fast to knit up. I had both mitts done within two days and ready to go because I waited to the last minute to decide to knit, um, to knit gifts for the bus driver and the t-shirt because that's what I tend to do is jam everything in the week before Christmas instead of spreading things out. I'm a procrastinator. So the next two items I have finished are actually the Woodstack mitts. And the first pair of Woodstack mitts I knit for my mother for Christmas. So, and I had spoken, I think multiple times on the podcast, but about them, but they were knit out of Wool of the Andes. 
and this was in a yarn that she and I had dyed about two years ago and I wasn't crazy about the way it came out she loved it so I knit it up for her and actually I love the way they came out and I love the way they fit and they came out so much I decided to knit myself a pair so I knit mine here they are they're so soft so I knit mine out of Malabrigo worsted and it is in the Patagoda, I'm not quite sure I said that right, colorway, and it is this beautiful red burgundy color, and I absolutely, I love it. It's so soft and squishy. They're going to be super warm. It's funny though, because I did block these out, and <laughs> I used the same needles, I did the same stitch count, my mother seemed a little bit more fitted in the hands, um, mine came out a little bit baggier but I'm okay with that. I have some like Under Armour uh, gloves that are supposed to go underneath mittens to help keep your hands warmer so when I'm shoveling it'll be good, there'll be room to fit underneath these but I absolutely love the way these came out and the way the weather's been going I am certainly going to need them this year so I was able to finish these in no time so I had started my mother's a year ago and I don't think I said these are I think I said these are the Woodstock mittens they're by Jane Richmond they were in the within book that she and Shannon Cook had put out and I had gotten the book for Christmas last year, so I had started knitting these probably in January of last year for my mom. And it took me almost a full year to finish them. These, I, I had these done within three or four days. They are super quick to knit, and I really did enjoy working with the worsted, um, the Malabrigo worsted, which is a single ply, and they're super soft. So my next finished object is a pair of socks that I had knit my older son Jacob for Christmas and they were Bruins colorway so they were knit out of Felici by Knit Picks and it was a colorway I had dyed up and then I actually had dyed up two skeins and I kind of went into the story last time in the podcast. I was going to knit a pair for my younger son who at the time wanted Hufflepuff socks and then the Bruin socks for my older son. And then my youngest son decided he didn't want Hufflepuff. He had retaken the test and he's a Ravenclaw. So I am knitting him a pair of Ravenclaw socks now. So I had a whole skein of yarn left over. So what I ended up doing is, again, waited to the last minute and started this the Saturday before Christmas. I, I ended up knitting my older son Jacob a hat and what I did was I just held the yarn double so it was worsted and I used roughly the Pearl Soho's pattern uh, for the cuffed classic hat and all I did though was I didn't do the ribbing long as long as they called for but I did the decreases, I used the same account for, um, for the hat, stitch count for the hat. So, and I had this done again in, in no time, which was good. I was even working on it on Christmas Eve, trying to hurry up and get this done in time for Christmas. And, we waited, so every Christmas Eve, my husband and I, after the kids go to bed, we watch the George C. Scott version of A Christmas Carol. So I was knitting away as quickly as possible on this hat and managed to end up getting it done on time to put in his stocking. So I was happy about that. So that is all of my finished objects. So when I have um, I have quite a few works in progress, 
So let me start with my big work in progress. And this is being housed in my Canny Casey bag. I think that's how you say it. As always, it'll be in the show notes below. I love this bag. Um, it is sturdy and great quality. It has a nice wax canvas bottom. Um, and it's lined in a nice thick canvas. And it has a pocket with grommets. And let me see if I can. Here's her tag. And I just, I absolutely love this bag. So I am knitting, and this is housing my Schweig, I think that's how you say it, sweater by Caitlin Hunter. So last podcast I was saying I had issues with the last um, color work part. I miscounted two, twice. So... <laughs> I had to tink back and I, again, I do not like tinking back color work, but I managed to get it done. So all of the color work is done and I have separated for the sleeves and I am working on the body. So I am, I love the pattern. I absolutely love it. I had was trying to decide whether or not, so the body of the pattern has these cute little cabled X's on it. And I'm so glad I'm doing it, but the first row of X's I tried doing it without a cable needle. Um, it's not for me. I actually go much faster using a cable needle because I'm working on the second row of X's much faster and at first I'm like should I just rip back and just do plain stockinette for the body and skip the little X pattern but I'm glad I tested out this second row with the cable needle because I love the way the X pattern works and it is going much quicker with the cable needle for me and I am I'm knitting this out of yarn that I dyed myself so this was for the contrasting color and it's a gold with navy and red speckles throughout it and then for the main body I dyed up this green here and I am alternating between two skeins because one is a little bit lighter than the other but I'm not getting any obnoxious pooling so far. So I'm glad as much as, as a pain as it is to alternate between two skeins, I am glad I, I did because it is coming out very nicely and there's no pooling. So that's my big work in progress. And then I decided to cast on all of the socks. So, I was getting sick of working on my son's hat for a while and he, I'm trying to think, the Sunday before, no not Christmas Eve, so the Saturday before, I wanted the hat to be a surprise. He knew about the socks but I wanted the hat to be a surprise so I couldn't knit with him awake and he was just, he's not a very good sleeper to begin with. Um, even as a child, we'll put him to bed at 7.30, 8 o'clock, and he'd still be wide awake at 11. So anyways, I decided to cast on my Ravenclaw socks for my younger son, Ryan. And this is out of Snaggly Gaster. Uh, this is her Polaris sock base, the 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. And this is her Ravenclaw colorway. And here's one of the balls. So I am loving the way these look. It's all twisted, here we go. And here they are. I am doing these toe up, two at a time. I haven't quite decided how I feel about the two at a time. Um, I've been doing really well not getting the yarn completely tangled. If I keep both balls in um, my project bag, and this is, by the way, this is a project bag I had sewn up several years ago for myself, a little Harry Potter. I figured it's fitting for Ravenclaw socks. Um, 
the yarn doesn't seem to get that tangled, but it doesn't make for an easy tr travel for me. And it, it's funny because I see um, Bad Wolf Girl Meg from Bad Wolf Girl Sits and Knits podcast. She only does two at a time socks and she takes them everywhere. I'm just not there yet. Maybe I'll get used to it. It's kind of nice to have them. D they'll be done at the same time and then you'll know they're the same length because you've knit the same exact amount of rows without having to count. So I do like the thought of that, but I'm not crazy. I feel like it's taking me longer. It's a little bit more fidgety, especially with getting the second sock started um, when you're doing a round. So, and then I also had ordered and I had gotten them right before Christmas, a couple of sugar tots um, progress Keeper. So this is her Strawberry Frap Progress Keeper and I love these. Um, and this is keeping, this is my um, right side, the top of my foot, and this is the back of my foot. So this is kind of keeping me so I know when I finished a complete round. So that is my first pair of socks that I'm working on. So for my next socks, um, this is my Christmas Eve cast on and it is being housed in my Pearl and Plum uh, winter sock bag and these have cute little polar bears with hats and scarves on them. So for my Christmas Eve cast on, I was having a hard time deciding between two different sock yarns and I had originally said I was going to do the Legacy Fiber Arts in the Cozy Toes, the Willy Wonka, Willy Wonka colorway. And I have been going back and forth between that and a homespun house, um, the Half-Blooded Prince colorway. I did decide, I had originally said I was going to do the Legacy Fiber Art, so that's what I did. So here's the tag, and it's a Cozy Toes base, which is an 80% merino, 10% cashmere, and 10% nylon. And I am knitting these concurrently. So this is... Here's the second one that I'm working on. So I am doing these a magic loop. So here's this one. And this one has my cute little peppermint narwhal progress keeper by Sugar Tots. I had ordered that when I had ordered the strawberry frappe one. But I am loving the way this is coming out. And here is one of the balls wound up. So I am, I have been putting my um, new food scale to good use and I've been measuring out 50 gram balls of yarn so I can knit socks concurrently as well. So I am knitting these on Knit Picks. These are the Carbons needles. I'm sorry, Knitter's Pride. Knitter's Pride Carbon needles. I'm not a fan. One of them isn't bad. It's the joins are pretty good where it is sliding smoothly, but the other one, this one, the joins are horrible. So I am considering moving these to my nine inch chow goo circular needles. Chow goo are my needles of choice. I absolutely love them. The Ravenclaw socks are being knit on a 40 inch. Um, circular needle by Chow Gu. I'm knitting my sweater on a, my Chow Gu interchangeable sets. I love them. The joins are always super smooth. I have no issues and the metal tips, they just, my knitting just fly. So I do prefer the Chow Gu's and I keep trying new needles, but I always end up falling back on my chow goos. So my final work in progress is being housed in my Fringe Supply company bag and actually I did pick up um, a couple enamel pins to go on it. So I have the Grocery Girls enamel pin as well as Loon Lavender Yarn Company and being housed in this bag is another sock project and I am a knitting of the Clark socks by Jacqueline Salem out of a homespun house and this is her gold Selena base um, the colorway is the half-blooded prints 
Now, back in the fall, I tried knitting the clock socks using Regia Tweed. I love Regia Tweed yarn, and I love the clock sock patterns. I hated the combination of the two, so I frogged those and decided yesterday, being New Year's, that I was going to cast on my first pair of socks for 2018 that'll be completed and finished in 2018. So here is what I have done and I am completely in love. I am in love with the pattern. I am in love with the color. It is the Regia Tweed. I think I was saying it was too thick and it was too dense of a fabric that it was very hard on my hands to cable. This is not. This is just perfect. I am flying with these and here is the color here and I just adore this and I don't know how much you can see it is Stelina it, it twinkles it is just absolutely beautiful and I don't know if the light will pick it up I'm trying to move it around it reminds me of a cold, cold morning with frost on the trees as the sun is rising. The light reflects off of that frost and just makes everything sparkle. That's what this Delina reminds me of. It just, it sparkles. I'm hoping the light's picking it up, but I'm not too sure it is. But I am absolutely loving this and I'm very excited this will be for my box of socks I have decided this year that I'm going to participate in the box of socks fingers crossed um haven't the last few years but hoping these two that I'm working on right now well one's for Ryan so that wouldn't count and my Christmas Eve cast-ons won't count because I cast it on before the first of the year. So these will be my first socks for my box of socks. So I am excited about that. So I did get a couple other things for Christmas that I wanted to share. And then I actually did pick up another skein of sock yarn. But let me, this actually came in a few days after I podcasted. But this is Clark and L in the a Georgia Whip Podcasting colorway, so which is a colorway inspired by the Grocery Girls. And oh, look at these speckles. This is just beautiful. It's hot pink with a little bit of lime green and navy. And I saw some turquoise. Here we go. Some turquoise. So this is just stunning. So I haven't decided which sock pattern I'm going to do with this yet, but I can't wait to use this. And it is soft. This is in her 80% um, superwash, 20% nylon. And I think to be quite honest with you, this is my base of choice for socks. I love the twist of this. Um, the Stelina by Sock Yarn also, even though it's, um, 75% merino. It has a nice twist to it too. I like the um, high twists in my sock yarn and working with those. So I can't wait to knit with that. And then the other two things I got were both gifts from my parents. So the first two things they had picked me up. So they were up in New Hampshire and there was a yarn store that was going out of business. And it's sad, it seems like there are quite a few yarn shops going out of business. So about a year ago, my yarn shop went out of business. Um, that was literally a mile down the road from me. And then there's another one about 25 minutes away that is closing. And then my parents were up in New Hampshire and my mom's not a knitter, but she's a quilter. So they had stopped that keepsake quilts up in New Hampshire and there was a yarn store next door and that was going out of business. So they stopped in and they picked up two of these. This is Jagger Spun, uh, Super Lamb, um, Lamb's Wool yarn. And this is, it's a light fingering. And they picked me up two and it's in the raw umber colorway. So I've decided with these, I'm gonna uh, knit the Agassi 
and I think I said it right, but I'll put the name down below by Bristol Ivy. So it's a t-shirt uh, with lace um, on top of the sleeve, uh, shoulders. And I'll stick a picture of it in here. So that's what these will become. So they gave me that. And then they also gave me a little bit of Christmas money. And I was trying to go back and forth on what I should do with it. And I have enough yarn. I do not need any more yarn. And I was going back and forth. There was something I really, really wanted. But I was trying to decide if I could justify spending it. And my husband finally convinced me. He said, it's Christmas money. It's money that you don't have to budget for anything else. Get what you want with it. So I ended up picking up another Fringe Supply feel bag. But this is in the wax canvas plaid. And I absolutely love it. I can't wait to use it so I just I love the colors I was going back and forth between the camo and the plaid I love camo the plaid sold me only because um, it reminded me of my grandmother my grandmother had a wool skirt she had gotten from Scotland in this plaid and she used to wear it all the time especially for the holidays so the I decided this would be great. It would remind me of her. So I am thrilled with this. And I already know what project I'm going to stick in here. And I will share that later on. So that is it for um, the new items. The new yarn that has come into my life. And uh, that's it for the knitting. So uh, just over the last few weeks... With the holidays we've been super busy we've had a such a wonderful time so the on Christmas Eve we always we go to mass and then after mass we always go to my mother's house and it was always a trend uh, tradition that when I was younger we would go to mass and we would go to my meme's house and we would have a meal and we'd open all the presents from my meme and my pepe so my mother has decided she wants that to be a transition where once we go to mass we go home and the kids get to open all the presents from her and my dad as well as my, my mom's twin sister my aunt so the kids get to open up all those gifts on Christmas Eve so that's what we did and it was super nice my twin brother was in from New York with his daughter and then my brother and his wife who normally go up to Bar Harbor to visit her family for Christmas were actually they were just there for a wedding a few weeks ago so they were able to spend it with us so it was nice to have the whole family together and we just did um, sandwiches and then my mom made a toutier which is a French meat pie which is one of our favorite things. So we ended up having that and there's always so much dessert and it's so funny because my mom used to complain. My meme would um, bake cookies for months and she would put them in these old dress boxes from in the 50s when you bought a dress they put them in these big boxes. She would fill them up and stick them in an attic room um, to keep them cool for Christmas and my mom and my aunt used to sneak, sneak up there and eat all the cookies and my meme would never notice because she always cooked way too much. Well, We had so much dessert it wasn't even funny. So I guess falling into that tradi tradition too with way too many Christmas cookies. So then after my parents house we always come home and we watch the, my husband and I put the kids to bed and we watch the Christmas Carol together and normally have a glass of wine and I knitted ferociously on Jake's hat to get that done for that morning um, which was it was just enough time I had just finished it by the time the movie ended so it was perfect timing and then on Christmas morning the kids were up super early I heard them at about 5 30 however my husband had kind of given them directions they weren't allowed to leave the rooms until 6 30 so I ended up getting up at about 6 and I had made some um, monkey bread for them so I got up at 6 to prepare the monkey bread to stick it in the oven so that it would be all finished baking by the time they were done opening up their gifts 
and they were 6.30 on the dot. They were out of their rooms waking up my husband, but which is great. It's enjoy that now because someday it's not going to be like that. The excitement's going to get lost. So that was great. And then um, we ended up having everybody over and I think I've kind of talked about it before. It's just so crazy when everybody comes over that I don't get a chance to sit down and enjoy myself because I'm too busy baking and cooking and setting the table and making sure everything's all set that Christmas is over before you know it. And then um, I ended up having to work last week. My husband had the week off. He works at Boston University, so they're closed for the week. So that was nice. Today's actually his first day back at work. Um, so he had the whole week off with the boys. And then New Year's Eve, honestly, it was too cold. The friends we normally hang out with, none of us did anything. It was just too cold to move. So I cooked up a whole bunch of appetizers. We had mozzarella sticks and shrimp cocktail and mini crab cakes and cheese and crackers and uh, little pigs in a blanket way too much food for the four of us but then that's what we ate yesterday so it didn't go to waste but we did that new year's eve i was asleep by 10 o'clock so my kids stayed up with my husband and uh watched the ball drop which was great and that was it it was very low key we didn't do much but it was nice it was nice and relaxing i was able to just sit and knit we enjoyed each other's company it was just absolutely perfect so that is all i have so i hope you guys have had a wonderful holiday and a happy new year and have a two uh, great two weeks ahead bye